see here. It was a big day. Yeah. A lot of significance. Do I? I assume you have a director here. Hmm? You have a director who slaps these things uh, together? And no. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> <All right. coughs> uh, Mr. President, one of the primary concerns of many of Radio Free Europe's listeners is their separation over the last four decades from the rest of Europe and the sense of loss they feel as a result. In your remarks on the Normandy beaches last year, you spoke eloquently of, quotes the great sadness of this loss echoing down to our time in the streets of Warsaw, Prague, and East Berlin. The Soviet troops that came to the center of this continent did not leave when peace came. They are still there, uninvited, unwanted, unyielding. Mr. President, what can the United States do to overcome this artificial division of Europe? What can the other democracies, particularly in Western Europe, do do you see a particular role for Radio Free Europe in this crucial regard? I believe that the principal thing that we in the United States and Western democracies can do and must do to overcome this artificial division of Europe is to stand for freedom, democracy, rule of law, unconditional individual human rights, and governmental legitimacy by the consent of the governed. Forty years ago, American and Soviet soldiers met on the banks of the Elbe, and they celebrated VE Day in the spirit of comradeship cemented by blood. The event was symbolic of the hopes of many ordinary people, both in America and the Soviet Union, that the wartime alliance would lead to peacetime cooperation between the two great nations. Needless to say, these hopes proved illusory. But looking back to those promising days, what are your feelings and thoughts concerning the great chance and great challenge the world has missed? And what can now be done to ensure that the peace begun in 1945 will endure? We greatly appreciate the enormous sacrifices the peoples of the East made in the struggle against Nazism. But the great hopes for post-war peace proved so illusory because they were based on an unrealistic understanding of what it took to create real peace. People somehow forgot that real peace is indivisible from respect for human rights. Great. All right. I thank you. I think you have a career after this. 